what's happening with my subscribers, man. Lately, on everything, I've been really, like, going back to the origins. Like, where a person from, the things from childhood that stood out, all of that. So this story right here, this is about high-profile cases in the 80s in Sacramento that Sacramento was known for because we wasn't known for other than being the capital of California we didn't had to, we didn't have a whole lot of shit going on back in the 80s right but we did have high profile cases number one Dorcia Puente Dorcia Puentes Dorcia Puentes was an older Mexican lady Older Mexican lady in Sacramento, downtown. She used to have a boarding house. She was poisoning the tenants, like killing them. I don't know how she was getting them to the backyard, but she was killing her tenants and taking a dog ass to the backyard and burying them. And this was a lady. She was older, a Mexican lady, Dorcia. Suspect, and when she asked to go buy a coffee, they allowed her to do so. She wound up immediately fleeing to Los Angeles. Meanwhile, at the same time she was fleeing, the investigators dug up the whole yard and uncovered the body of a 78-year-old Leona Carpenter. Then they found six more corpses. That's when the police realized just what a terrible mistake it was to have let her go. Dorothea Puente was missing for five days. In LA, she met an elderly man in a bar and befriended him, unfortunately for her. The man recognized her from TV reports and reported her to the local police. Charged with a total of nine murders, Puente was flown back to Sacramento. On her way back, she told reporters that she hadn't killed anyone, saying, I used to be a very good person at one time. Because of laborious legal battles, Puente was 64 years old when she went to trial, which was five years after her initial arrest. And they must have dug up bodies. I, I forget the number of bodies, but I know they dug up at least like six, seven bodies of tenants that she killed. She put Sack on the map. About that. Number two. Morris Solomon Jr. So let me tell you about Morris Solomon Jr. So one day... One day, my mom is reading the newspaper. She reading the, because we used to, well, my mom used to deliver newspapers when I was a kid. And a lot of times I used to help her put the magazine, the rubber bands on or whatever. And then, uh, but she was reading the newspaper. And I used to have a babysitter named Cherie Washington. That babysitter was my best friend. My best friend, Sterling, that was his mom. And his mom used to babysit me. So one day my mom looked at the newspaper and she was like, do you remember her? I was like, yeah, that's Cherie. That's Sterling's mom. She was like, she dead. I was like, what? And sure enough, Morris Solomon had killed my best friend's mom. I'm only like seven years old. That was traumatic. Like being a little kid and your babysitter get killed. Your best friend's mom? It was like something was missing out of them, out of the, her kids. Like, I mean, well, Sterling for sure afterwards, but that was traumatic. But he, so S'more Solomon, what he used to do is he used to get like prostitutes, and sometimes they wasn't prostitutes, but he would get them and strangle them. And he did the same thing, he would bury them. One month earlier, in February 1987, the mother of two children, 26-year-old Cherie Washington, was a woman whose life was spiraling out of control. She was absolutely a beautiful, gorgeous woman. She was a singer. <laughs> she was a dancer. They said we should go to the parties. And she would be the best dancer and singer out the whole set. Let's bury him in the backyard. And the number of women he killed... I swear, I think it was like over 10. It was over 10 women that Morris Solomon killed. And so Dorcia and, and, and Morris Solomon, 
they like forever ingrained in Sacramento history. More Solomon was that that stuff happened in Oak Park. That happened in Oak Park in Sacramento. Dorcia Puentes was downtown. Number three, the good guy shooting. The good guy shooting. The good guys. You remember? Sir, I don't even. They don't even have them no more. I don't. They don't even have Circuit City or the good guys no more. Like, like good sir. I don't even. Man, I went. I went in in '97. I came home in 2013. When I came home in 2013, there was no such thing as Circuit City or the good guys. So anyhow, the good guys shooting in South Sacramento. Probably about, it's about four minutes from where I am now. On Florin and 65th, there used to be a good guy store. A good guy store, for y'all that don't know, it, it was like Fry's, Fry's Electronic. But it was smaller. Or like, uh, they used to have a, have a uh, well, it was like a, a super-sized radio shack for y'all that remember radio shack. So anyhow, these, they, they were Vietnamese. They went in to to uh, Radio Shack and took everybody hostage. They took everybody in the store hostage and made everybody get face down, like made them all like lay down. And when they did it, all of a sudden it zapped in, boop, like the news, like major news, Channel 3, 13, 10, 40. This was like breaking news, like, like good guys hostage situation. Like they were negotiating with these Asians for hella long. I'm talking about into the night. They let like a couple of hostages go, but they, they negotiated through the night. So what the police did is there was a paint store next to this good guy. There was a paint store. What they did is they came in through the roof of the paint store and dropped in like zip ties, zzz, dropped down to the to the good guys, to the to the floor where the agents couldn't see them because they was distracting them in the front because it was it was hella police and news and everything in the front. And from the news view, I mean, we could see the M, the, the agent on the phone. I think they wanted a helicopter and some more shit, but we could see the agent on the phone walking back and forth with an AK in his head. Then all of a sudden, while it was live on the news, you see the, the you don't see the police, but you hear them. Like you hear like a flash grenade or something. Boom! You see a flash. All of a sudden, the Asian dude that had the AK started running down the aisle, just letting loose on all the because all the hostages was laying down on the ground. He ran down the aisle. Wah! Shooting all the hostages, like as many hostages as he could. I don't remember if he shot himself or the police shot him or I know some of his pot. I forget. I think it was like three or four, but like one or two survived or some shit. New Yen. But in the eighties, good guys might've been 90, but I think it was 89. But as far as like things that Sacramento was known for in the eighties, as far as high profile incidents, Aside from the East Side Rapists, aside from the East Side Rapists, but them three right there stand out. Dirty weather, Sacramento history, go.